Let's talk about the relationship between vitamin D and melatonin. As we transition into longer nights here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are relying on the power of those dark, long nights to accumulate and secrete melatonin and really dive into that repair process. That's a different thing than what we see in those longer days of summer where our skin is exposed to ultraviolet B light that allows allows for the conversion of vitamin D in the body. Now, when we look at these two hormones, they're both hormones, they have really similar effects in the body. We see that they're both antioxidant. They are both very anti-inflammatory. They have systemic effects throughout the body and they both regulate mitochondrial function. The difference with them is they are aligned with a different rhythm in that circadian light dark rhythm, right? So we see melatonin peaking in the middle of the night around 2 to 4 a.m. We see that ultraviolet B light peaks at that solar noon when we're talking about our summer days. And that is when we are able to convert vitamin D in the body but they have very similar effects throughout the body and they have an interesting relationship. So when we are low in vitamin D, we also have seen through the research that that low vitamin D can translate to low melatonin. We also see that melatonin helps keep our stores of vitamin D throughout the winter. So it's this wonderful relationship that the two of them have to really nurture our systemic overall health, our immune function, our mitochondrial function, our anti-inflammatory function, our antioxidant potential, even though they're dealing with different light, dark schedules, right? So when we get up in the day, in the morning and see that ultraviolet A light. We are exposed to that beautiful spectrum of natural light in the morning. That allows for a big cascade of hormones, right? We have a dumping of dopamine, serotonin that's later converted into melatonin in the pineal gland. We have our sex hormones and that backbone of pregnenolone that are all dependent on that early AM light. That light in the summertime, as the sun climbs into the sky, we go from that ultraviolet A light as the dominant um, spectrum in our sky to that ultraviolet B coming on the scene and really being at its peak at solar noon when the sun is directly above us. And that is when our skin is able to harvest vitamin D or actually convert vitamin D within the body. Now, as that sun begins to go down and we hit dusk, we see that ultraviolet B disappears, ultraviolet A disappears, and we are dominant in that red and infrared spectrum as that sun fades. Now, those times of sunrise and sunset or dawn and dusk are really powerful modulators on our circadian rhythm and all of the circadian genes within us, right? It was 2017 that three researchers were awarded the Nobel Prize for their work on chronobiology or how the sun, how light affects our biology and the effects are profound. We all have circadian clocks throughout our body, throughout our cells. Most of our cells have circadian genes or circadian clocks. When light enters our eye and hits the back of the eye, that specialized layer of cells called the retina has blue light sensitive opsins, melanopsins that are able to gauge the blue light in our environment. And this is what's triggering a lot of those hormonal and neurotransmitter cascades that I just mentioned, right? That AM sun triggering some of that release and some of those biological cascades. Now, on the flip side, as the sun starts to recede and goes down at dusk, we are also sending a signal through our retina that that light has left our environment and it's time to cue the biology that is rampant during darkness. And this absence of 
blue light in our environment cues many different things in our biology. Now, melatonin is one of those main players in our biological cascades and hormones that are triggered by less light, that are triggered by darkness. And when we have that natural rhythm of the sun going down, that blue light disappearing from our environment. Of course, we live in the modern um, days and we have artificial lighting that allows to, us to tell our biology that it's solar noon, even if it's 10 o'clock at night, right? That artificial LED lighting that's rich in that blue light, a narrow spectrum of blue light, but still it signals to our body to continue to secrete cortisol, which blocks the release of pineal melatonin. And this is important because as we're talking about in this video, we have so many of our biological functions are based on this daily flux and release of melatonin. Melatonin is acting as a massive antioxidant in the system. It's massively anti-inflammatory and it's acting as a circadian regulator, right? We need that morning light coming in through our retina, signaling to our body that it's daytime, that release of pregnenolone and cortisol, dopamine, our sex hormones, serotonin, but we also need the converse happening as the sun goes down. We need blue light to exit our environment so that we can cue those circadian rhythms and releases such as melatonin. So when we're looking at this relationship between vitamin D and melatonin, we see that that summertime sun allows us to convert vitamin D and it is fat soluble. So we are able to store that as we lose that ultraviolet B and that ability to convert vitamin D in the body. We have these longer nights that set us up to release ample amounts of melatonin. And that melatonin is allowing us to keep those stores of vitamin D longer. So it's this beautiful relationship that's happening there where they're really working together. And we can see a deficiency in vitamin D playing out as a risk factor for low melatonin. And so what we see is that this relationship that we have with light in our environment is foundational to our health, whether we're talking about bright summer days or the darkness of winter, whether we're talking about daylight or whether we're talking about the darkness of night. Both of these rhythms are important. It's not that one is more important than the other. We are seasonal beings and we are meant to align with that season. We are meant to get sun in the summertime and build those stores of vitamin D. Of of course, safe sun exposure, we don't want to cause damage, but we are meant to be in rhythm with the sun. And when we have these longer nights in the winter, we are meant to reap the benefits of melatonin. And after living for years in this seasonal rhythm, I can tell you that my body craves that sunshine and that energy that's produced in those summer days and that sunlight that's so abundant in summer. My body also transitions as we lose Use that light into a relationship with melatonin where I am excited to get longer sleeps. I'm excited to be in the darkness longer in wintertime. That deep, restful, restorative sleep that melatonin gives me, especially in the wintertime, I look forward to that. I am a seasonal creature just as we all are. And standing in that Flux and in that flow, I often say that there is a universal flow of energy that flows through every plant, animal, and human. And it's not just photonic energy coming from the sun, it's these seasonal rhythms. And the world around us holds this medicine, holds this opportunity for us to heal if we can align with it. If you like this content, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much for joining me.